Okay. <coughs> Thank you for, for the introduction. And first of all, uh, I would like to acknowledge all my co-authors and mainly Sophie Tardoski, who is in charge of this project, and he, she is a PhD student in the in the lab. So this work was conducted because, uh, as you know, drug delivery is a challenge since only a small fraction of the detected drug ever reaches the target region, since it uh, requires permeability of the endothelium and permeability of the cell membrane. Using ultrasound, several techniques have been developed to locally uh, trigger the delivering of drugs, and all of the techniques mainly involve cavitation, stable or initial cavitation, and this cavitation can be enhanced by using ultrasound microbubble contrast agents. Several studies have also suggested to use thermosensible liposome in order to uh, trigger the delivery of the drugs that, is, that are encapsulated into these liposomes. In this study, we investigated whether low-intensity ultrasound may also have a role to play in drug delivery by creating mild hyperthermia up to 43 degrees using low-intensity ultrasound and also by creating mechanical stress while avoiding uh, creation of cavitation during treatments. The context of the study is the treatment of bone metastasis, which is a frequent complication of breast cancer. And when the tumor develops inside the bone, it creates osteolysis by activating the activity of osteoclast. So it destroys the bone and the tumor grows inside the, the bone. It induces pain, hypercalcemia, and fractures, and it increases the morbidity for patients. One of the treatments is the use of biphosphonates and mainly the solidonic acid. It is a drug used as a palliative treatment because this drug has a high affinity for the bone and is not bioavailable for the tumor. Although it can have a direct anti-tumoral effect, but the quantity of uh, zoledonic acid is not enough to penetrate uh, inside the, the tumor. So when zoledonic acid is used, it blocks the osteolysis, but it doesn't act directly on the tumor. It is a small molecule that cannot pass through the membrane by diffusion due to its uh, negative charge. So we investigated whether low intensity ultrasound can increase the uptake of ZOL in a mammary tumor cell line, and if the way the drug penetrates inside the tumor is due to endocytosis. And we also investigated uh, by which way the endocytosis is promoted when a low intensity ultrasound is delivered. This is the ultrasound devices we used in this study. They, this is the probe, and the probe is uh, with a flat transducer is a four centimeter of active diameter. And we investigated several exposure conditions. The first one uh, is the use of a low intensity pulsed ultrasound to create only mechanical stress in the cells. So the exposure time was uh, 30 minutes, the working frequency one megahertz. The acoustic intensity was very low 30 milliwatt per square centimeter spatial average, temporal average. The pulse length was 200 microseconds, and the pulse repetition frequency was 1 kilohertz. We compared this group with the use of low intensity ultrasound, but delivered in continuous mode. So in that case, we have mechanical stress and also the production of heat up to 43 degrees in cells. The exposure time was again 30 minutes, but the working frequency was higher, 2.9 megahertz, in order to increase the absorption of the wave. And the acoustic power was adjusted between 8 and 13 acoustic watts in order to increase the temperature and then maintain the temperature at 43 degrees. In that case, we produce hyperthermia and mechanical stress. And these two groups were compared with hyperthermia alone which was created 
using a warm bath at 43 degrees during 30 minutes. This is the experimental setup. The probe was covered by a sterile envelope and placed directly in contact with the cell and the drug placed in petri dishes. The probe was connected to a power amplifier and a function generator uh, driven by a computer. We measured the cavitation activity uh, using a hydrophone and several thermocouples were used to measure temperature inside the medium. IPP was used as a surrogate marker of salt penetration and action on tumor cells, and it was measured using mass spectrometry. Transmission electron microscopy was used to observe endocytosis vesicles, and transmission electron microscopy with immunocode labeling was used to evaluate which proteins are um, involved in mediating endocytosis. So these are the results of temperature measurements. We observed the temperature increased when continuous low intensity ultrasound was used up to 43 degrees. A similar temperature increase was obtained using a warm bath creating hypothermia alone. And no temperature increase was observed when low intensity ultrasound was delivered in pulse mode. These are the results of cavitation measurements and no signs of cavitation were observed using low intensity ultrasound delivered continuously or in pulse mode. So there was no harmonics or wide brand emission since the intensity was very low. I haven't mentioned, but the maximal peak negative pressure was 0.3 uh, megapascal at 3 megahertz. And we evaluated uh, several experimental conditions. The first one was to apply the treatment, low intensity ultrasound or hypothermia in presence of the drug. So the treatment lasted 30 minutes and the drug was placed in contact with cells up to 18 hours. This was, this was compared with a group where the treatment was applied first and then the drug was placed in contact with the cells in order to observe if the effect is transient or permanent, the effect uh, created by ultrasound, and then we compare that with the drug alone. So these are the results of um, uh, IPP measurements. So this is a surrogate marker of the presence of the drug inside the cells. The black bars correspond to this group. So the treatment is applied when the drug was in contact with the cells. So if there is no drug, there is no IPP uptake. If there is only the drug, there is a slight uptake of the drug inside the cells. And we observed an increase of the drug uptake if the drug is combined with lipus, and a further uh, increase if uh, exposure condition involves mechanical stress by ultrasound and also hypothermia. If uh, the drug is combined only with hypothermia using a warm bath. We also observed a significant increase of the drug uptake, but uh, we have a further increase if the, the hypothermia is combined with the mechanical stress produced by uh, ultrasound. If we look at these results, so if we first apply the treatment and then the drug, we don't see any differences with the drug alone meaning that it is a transient effect that is created by ultrasound. So low intensity ultrasound without involving cavitation forces the penetration of Zoll inside cells. If the sonication parameters were adjusted to create mid hyperthermia in addition to mechanical stress, so this is this group, we observed a further significant drug penetration when compared with mechanical stress alone or hypothermia alone. We then observed the uh, biological mechanism that is involved in this process by looking at uh, endocytosis vesicle uh, by uh, uh, microscopy, electronic microscopy. And we observed an increase of endocytosis vesicle only when we applied uh, low intensity ultrasound, whether it is pulse ultrasound or continuous ultrasound, 
uh, we, we observed a significant increase. There was no significant difference of endocytosis physical when the control group was compared with the drug alone. And most important, the presence of the drug does not involve endocytosis since there was no differences between the group treated with ultrasound or the drug in addition to, uh, to ultrasound. So this effect is not dependent of the presence of the drug in the cell culture medium, but is induced uh, by the application of low intensity ultrasound. So we also uh, look at uh, which protein is involved in the endocytosis process. There are several proteins that can induce endocytosis. And interestingly, we observed that only one, the clatrin protein, was involved in the creation of endocytosis. Uh, if we observe that another one, which is called caveolin, there is no significant differences between groups, but we observe an increase in the production of clatrin only in the group that involves uh, the application of ultrasound. And the major effect is again obtained when hyperthermia was combined with um, mechanical stress created by low intensity ultrasound. This was confirmed by uh, fluorescence, and we observed a significant uh, higher catrin accumulation in cells treated by ultrasound, and mainly in cells treated by ultrasound that involves hyperthermia and mechanical stress. So to conclude, we demonstrated that low intensity ultrasound increases the penetration of a drug, which is called the zoledronic acid, into tumor cells without involving cavitation effect. Low intensity ultrasound do not affect cell viability and proliferation. I haven't showed these results, but we have demonstrated that. Hyperthermia alone also increases cell penetration, but in a less extent that, uh, than continuous ultrasound, suggesting that mechanical effects play a major role in drug delivery. So this low intensity uh, ultrasound treatment increase the number of endocytosis physical, and this allows the drug to penetrate inside the cells. And this endocytosis phenomenon is mainly due to the clattering pathway. So I thank you for your attention. <laughs>